Yeah, it's working. Uh, I've, I've spoken at conferences before, but this is, uh, this is something else. This is a little, a little humbling. And today I'm actually, uh, I'm feeling extra nervous because I'm not talking about technology. I don't have any slides with code or tables or data or graphs. Today I'm telling a story and it's, it's my story. And I'm not sharing it because I think it is special. I'm sharing it because I know it is not. And it would have really helped me to hear about this story before I got started as a lead developer. And I hope by telling this story, I can help some of you. So two years ago, in the spring of 2016, through a series of unfortunate circumstances, I had to look for a new job. Uh, I had been a front-end developer for over 15 years. And um, through a series of very fortunate circumstances, one of my old employers found out that I was back on the market and invited me over for coffee. And when they did, they offered me a position of chapter lead, front-end chapter lead, where I would be leading a team of 15 different front-end developers, actually a group of 15 different front-end developers distributed over different teams. And the reason I'm here talking about it is because the experience of turning into a lead developer was not great for me. And I almost gave up several times, in fact. Um, so I'm here to explain about how I felt being a lead developer compared to being a developer. So before I explain how I felt as a lead developer, I want to explain how I felt as a developer. And the thing is about developer and being a developer is that I, I loved being a developer. I loved programming. I loved everything about it. Um, I love the way code looks in an editor. I love solving abstract puzzles with code. I love building stuff out of nothing. Um, I love having to occasionally dabble in psychology or mathematics um, or digging up some 50-year-old algorithm I last heard about in university. I loved everything about programming. And of course, there's more to development and being a developer than that. But in general, the job was not just satisfying to me. It was actually, it was really rewarding. It was fulfilling. And it, the, the things I did, it was visible. It was almost tangible. I could open up a browser and show my work to my friends and my peers and my family. And I say, I built that. And I was proud of that. And it gave me a sense of accomplishment. And I worked really hard to get good and to stay good. And I felt the things I did added value. It added value to the products that I was working on. It added value to the companies I was working for. And it added value to the lives of thousands, sometimes millions of users that used the products that I worked on. But the older I got and the more experienced I got, the more I got this nagging thought in the back of my head, this voice that told me, how long can you keep doing this? You've been doing this for 15 years. How long do you think you can stay relevant? How long do you think you can stay on top of the game? And front-end development was moving at a breakneck speed. It was like nothing I've ever seen before. And I'm a little ashamed to say that I had trouble keeping up. I had real trouble keeping up. And there were people much younger, and much less experienced than I was, that were creating solutions I didn't understand to problems I didn't realize I was having. And I, I couldn't help but think, is this it? Is, it? is it time to move on? Am I getting too old for this? And it was during a period of particular self-doubt that this old employer came up to me, invited me over for coffee, and offered me the position of chapter lead. So naturally, I, I took the offer. I thought, this is my way out. This is the next step in my career. And it was a huge step in my career, if you can call having the same job for 15 years a career. Um, so they gave me this offer for chapter lead, and I had no idea what I was signing up for. I really didn't. That's not entirely true. I had some ideas of what I was signing up for, but none of them turned out to be true. And the thing is that, I was completely unprepared for the reality of being a lead developer. 
And the reality was rather disappointing. It wasn't nearly as fulfilling and nearly as rewarding as I found being a programmer. At the end of the day, I would go home and I would think about my day and I would think, what have I done today? What did I create? What did I build? What value did I add? And I didn't create anything anymore, at least nothing that added value. Most days, I would write more emails than lines of code. I would sit in meeting after meeting about things that had nothing to do with programming. And when I tried to get stuff done, I would get interrupted all the time. The interruptions were so bad that my interruptions would get interrupted. <laughs> and at night, at home, I would talk to my wife, and we would discuss our day, and my wife, she's a doctor, she had these amazing stories of really helping people, really making a difference in their lives. And you know, I took pride in my work. I write some damn fine emails. <laughs> But no email, no email compares to that, right? So I tried to get better. I read books, I watched videos, and I went to conferences. I went to the lead dev conferences here, right here in London last year. And it was a turning point for me. And I don't know if you were here last year, but it was amazing. Easily the best conference I've ever been. And the speakers were so inspiring. They gave me all these ideas on how to get better as a lead developer. And, um, <laughs> and it was just it was a real great experience for me to see these speakers talking so passionately about being a leader. And they gave me the idea, yeah, you can be passionate about this. But the best thing I took home from that conference wasn't something I learned in a talk. The best thing I took home was something that I learned by talking to the other people in the audience during the breaks. Because I did something that I should have done way before. I did something <laughs> that I should have done way earlier, and that is talk to other lead developers about how they were feeling about this transition. And it turned out that almost everyone I talked to was dealing with the same issues. They were also not seeing the real value of what they were doing. They were also missing the satisfaction and the fulfillment that they got out of programming. And talking to them and knowing that they also had these problems made me feel a little bit less alone and made me feel a little bit better about myself. And that's one of the main reasons I'm standing up here, because I understand not everybody talks to random strangers at a conference. So I thought if I would stand up here and tell you, hey, you're not alone, you're not weird, It's totally fine. You can feel like this, get over it, and maybe you know, you'll be presenting at this conference next year. So I came home from that conference not only determined to get better at being a lead developer, but also determined to get better at enjoying it. And it, it totally worked. It totally worked. I'm really happy to say that, otherwise I wouldn't be here, I guess. I'm really happy to say that it totally worked. And I found something that made me reevaluate and appreciate the work that I was doing and seeing the value in there. Now, I'm afraid there's no universal four-step program that I can give you that will help you do the same. But I hope that by telling you about my story and that you can take the things that apply to you and use the rest to fill in the blanks. And the first thing I had to do was completely let go of programming. And I don't mean the activity itself, I was still programming every now and then, but it, it would never give me the same satisfaction because I, I had so many other things to do. So I had to let go of that feeling that I wanted to, to get out of programming, I had to find something else to replace it. Because chasing that feeling actually prevented me from enjoying what I was doing. It prevented me from seeing the value in the work that I was doing. And then something interesting happened. My manager sent me an email And he asked me to look at the group of people that I was managing and to evaluate if their job title was matching their performance. We had this new career framework where all the job titles and all the um, responsibilities were standardized and they need to be rolled out uh, across the company and I needed to evaluate the people that reported to me. And I did so and I found that two people in my group were actually performing way better than their job title suggested. And I thought, they deserve more, they deserve better. So I focused all my email writing powers into this email that I wrote to my manager. 
and I argued for their uh, promotion. And two months later, they were promoted. And they got a significant raise. And it absolutely blew my mind. Because I suddenly realized that as a lead developer, I've been given a rather substantial amount of influence and power in this organization. And I never really bothered to use it. I never really bothered to use it for good. And I realized that I could use this power for good. I could use it to improve the lives of the people that I was working with, make their jobs and their lives a little bit better. And this made me reevaluate everything that I did. Meetings, interruptions, emails, everything. A meet if I attended a meeting, that usually meant that several developers did not have to attend. And they could continue uninterrupted on the work that they were doing. And I, that, that's one way I can help the people. If I sent out an email, it was usually for the benefit of the people around me to make sure that they had the information that they needed, that they were co collaborating with the right people, or support them in another way. And I learned to love interruptions because there's absolutely no better way to know for sure that you're going to help someone than if they interrupt you to ask for your help. And that really changed everything around for me. It really changed my perspective on everything that I did. So if you're like me, or if you're like any of the people that I talked to last year at this conference, and you're having trouble transitioning from your pure programming role to a lead developer role, or you're about to, and you're, you're going to maybe run into these issues. I just want you to know you're not alone, and there is hope. You can totally overcome this. And I hope I gave you some ideas on how to address it. And, you know, I, I like helping people, but it's not because I'm some sort of amazing selfless person. I like helping people because it makes me feel important, and it makes me feel valuable. And if you have power and if you have influence in your organization, just think about the ways that you can use that power that make you feel important and valuable. Now, I hope I didn't embarrass myself too much by talking about all of this in front of you. And I sure hope that nobody will ever look this up on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> but if I, if I helped just one of you enjoy your day a little bit more and gain you know, some appreciation for the work that you're doing, then it will have been worth it for me. And I really look forward to seeing you speak next year. Thank you. <laughs>